thanks for coming. Hi, thanks. On. You are a commercial insurance broker. Yes. And I wanted to have you on because I want to talk about motherhood, being that it's Mother's Day this weekend, and we're here working together at Industrious. I wanted to kind of do a quick shout out because they're giving me the day here, and I love it, and it's just beautiful. We, uh, I already am going to post a bunch of stuff on Instagram about it. So Yes, I love this space. We joke that it's adult daycare here. Oh, totally. Because they have breakfast for us every morning. There's bottomless coffee from Frothy Monkey. Snack time is at 2 o'clock. Happy hour is at 4. Um, so oh they always gosh. have fun stuff. We have a thing today where they're... Um, bringing in flowers so that you can make your own bouquet for Mother's Day, which I thought was awesome. So they, it's so nice. totally adult daycare here. Yeah, <laughs> we love yeah. it. I love it. And, uh, if you're, and it's a beautiful view of downtown and today it's a gorgeous day. So, yes. uh, yeah, check my Instagram stories cause I'll be posting those and, and on location with Danielle. Um, so the reason I wanted to have you on today is because I want to just kind of chat about like two moms just talking about stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things um, is you are a mom of two. Yep. And one of your, your daughter mm -hmm. is um, a special needs child. Yes. I don't even know, is that politically correct? Like well, what's the term? <laughs> so, I mean, I, my thought process on it is I give everybody grace with it because before I had Josie three years ago, I also didn't know what, like, I don't want to be offensive, but like, how do you say this? So essentially, I think there's a lot of schools of thought, but, um, you know, my daughter has Down syndrome and she has a congenital heart defect, but it doesn't define her. So like, she's not a Down's kid or a Down's baby or whatever, like she is a child who happens to have Down syndrome, and she is a child who happens to have a congenital heart defect, but it's not what defines her. So yeah. I think that that's usually like the safest way, but uh, most parents that you'll meet, at least who I have met, they're so wanting to share um, their story of their child so that we can remove the unnecessary fear that there is. Um, around having a child who has special needs, whatever they may be. So don't hesitate to ask, I guess is my point. Yeah. Ask more and then ask for forgiveness of like, I hope I'm not being offensive or whatever. Like always, yeah. always bring it up and include the conversation. Like, you know, sometimes it's so weird because kids, kids will just be honest and be like, yeah. hey mom, look at that, you right. know, whatever. Right. Whereas we're like, don't even look at them. And it's like... Right. Well, that'd be terrible that right. no one would look at your daughter right. in the street, right. like at a store. Like, yeah, mommy, why wouldn't? Any, why isn't anybody looking at me? Like right. everybody else is right. looking at everyone else. Right. That would be, you know, that totally is isolating. I would think. Yeah. So, you know, being curious and and asking, you know, how should I say that or yeah. what or just even asking questions, like instead of. Um, you know, shying away from mm -hmm. approaching people mm -hmm. Absolutely. is, I think, helpful. Yeah, I mean, I've even had some moms who have said, you know, my son asked questions about your daughter, and I would just love to talk to you because I want to make sure that I'm parenting, you mm -hmm. know, my child correctly and explaining it correctly, and I just wanted to talk to you about that. And that was so awesome to yeah. have that experience because... I mean, that's really what's going to truly shape inclusion and all of those things that everybody wants. Um, and I think that that is a huge conversation right now. You know, people are talking about all of these different spaces where we just need to have more acceptance and more inclusion. And I think that people with disabilities is a huge area that you're not hearing about and, and definitely a place where there needs to be more inclusion. So having those conversations with kids is what's going to change that for the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's true. Yeah. So you're a mom of two um, and you work. Yes. What's the biggest challenge that you have when you started working and being a mom and working? Have you always been a working mom? I've always been a working mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, my son is nine, which is insane, and I was totally a child having a child whenever I think about it. You know, I was 23 whenever I had him, mm -hmm. and um, 
So we didn't really have an option to not work, you know? So I've always been a working mom, but I feel like I've been very fortunate in that I've been able to work my boundary. I've been fortunate, but my boundaries have always been pretty set that I knew I was going to be present as a mother. My mom worked, but she was still always present. Yeah. Um, so I had that to see growing up and so that I, I kind of already had that expectation for myself. Um, so whenever I was looking at industries that I wanted to be a part of, that was kind of always in the background of like, I need to be able to still be present as a mother. I need to have control of my schedule. Um, and I just feel very much like, all right, what can I do to make the most amount of money for the least amount of work? You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's like the dream, right? Yeah. And so, um, that's kind of always been in the background of like parameters for places. How did your mom show you that? How did you know like, oh, she's present? Meaning like, were you meaning like very present, like physically present or like you just knew that she was always there if you needed her? Well, like for example, um, I was a bit of a troublemaker in school. No, not I know. Even, no. <laughs> um, and I remember that I had this one teacher who, like, kept a notebook about like all the things I did wrong. <gasps> no way. It was, the mo- it was so like when I think about that now, like that's bonkers. And my mom took that lady all the way to the superintendent, and oh, I remember wow. going to the superintendent's meetings with my mother, and oh, I was, wow. I mean. She was on it. She so, was that for you. Absolutely. And um, she she was a realtor, and she would, you know, if it, I, I remember sitting in her office if it was summer break and mom had to work. I got holed up whenever people were still using VHSs, right? I got holed up in a room watching Disney videos all day long or coloring or whatever because mom was working, mm-hmm. um, which I loved, and, and it was fun, but... She also was home for dinner and made dinner for us. I mean, we had dinner as a family every night. And um, yeah, so I think that that, I saw that she was able to work and still be home for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just as a disclaimer, before I get any hate mail, like I truly believe that every woman is a working woman. Yes. Because even if you're not working outside the home, like if you don't leave and go out there or you're not sitting at a desk at home, you're still a working mom. And you know, the I think that it's involved to where there's a lot of uh, women who are working like a side job, mm-hmm. but that sometimes turns into something bigger too. Oh yeah. So I I just wanted to make sure people Oh, 100%. That that. And I have a lot of really close friends that they are fortunate enough that they do get to stay home. And and it is definitely still work and it's a whole other type of hustle. It is. And honestly, there are plenty of days like that I I'm so grateful I have a job because I don't think I have the mental capacity to stay home. Yeah, I would probably not be very good at that. I, <laughs> like I've never I, been the homemaker type. I've yeah. never. I mean, some people are not. Now I was. I did. I've done both. So I I definitely had my years of staying home. Yeah. I was always entrepreneurial-ish and you know started companies and things like that and businesses and but um, yeah it's 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 all hard work that's and hard. I don't you know being with a toddler at home and a newborn Whew. that's like no, thanks woo, no I work becomes a break that. work becomes a break right yeah because you get to talk to adults too that's yes. a, that's a really good thing yes. so somewhere out there you're listening in and and hey, it gets better when they get old. <laughs> you get to have some talk, talking to them, you know, uh, where they you can reason with them. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I want to know, like, what is it that you do? Do you have a self care? That's like been the new buzzword. Right. You know, self care. Like, right. what does that look like? So, like this past week, I did a little self care, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna prop my foot up because I'd broken my toe and my ankle was swelling I'm gonna prop my foot up and I'm gonna just sit here and watch the Preds game or whatever but um, what how does what does self-care you know look like in your life I feel like self-care is becoming a buzzword because working absurd amount of hours became like this unspoken rule that you were supposed to do 
Um, so it's like almost this like bucking of the system of saying like it's important to take care of myself too, which is ridiculous. Like that's where I look to European culture where it's like, no, there's a siesta, okay, for a reason, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I would say my version of self-care is I do wake up early. Um, I was never a morning person. Again, my mom and dad can both tell so many stories on me, <laughs> sleeping until noon and all of these things. But um, I have become a morning person because that's the only real quiet time that I get. So I wake up at 5. Um, and that's when my husband leaves for work. So he just wakes me up whenever he's leaving and I will meditate or I'll do a yoga practice. I just watch a, like something on YouTube and do a yoga set through that. Mm -hmm. Um, and just kind of like ease into my day. I might read something. I might listen to some music. I might listen to a podcast, something, then I'll start getting ready at six. I'm completely ready by seven whenever the kids wake up. That way, when the kids wake up, I'm getting them fed, getting them ready to get, go to school, get, you know, Cameron on the bus and Josie's lunch made and get out the door so that we're out the door by 8, you know, drop her off at school at 8.30, and then I'm in the office by 9, and that's just the gig every single wow. day. Yeah. So um, I had a brief amount of time where I wasn't waking up early, and I just felt so frazzled and so stressed. And, it, and so resentful, really, mm -hmm. of my schedule that I was like, I'm a grown woman. I can control this. All I have to do is wake up early. Um, and so that really shifted a lot of things for me whenever I started doing that. So, yeah. I yeah. think that's key is having that time to yourself and... and Quiet. Yeah. Give me some quiet. Right? When no one else is awake in the house. Yeah. Anyways. I've also learned to love my drive-in. So I live in Thompson Station, and I work in um, downtown in the Gulch, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah. it's about a 30-minute drive, and so I will listen to a lot of podcasts on my drive-in, um, you know, and, and the topics vary if it's just going to be something funny or if it's going to be, sometimes I just need to have a car concert on my way in and sing the whole go. way in and dance, Same right, in my car, thing. Yeah, but I've learned to let that little piece be my time as well whenever I'm driving and then traffic doesn't bother me as much either yeah 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 what is, what's been the best tip that you've gotten about motherhood about being a mom Ooh, um one of my girlfriends I when I was pregnant with my son I read like every parenting book that there could be mm -hmm. and she comes over and she's like Danielle you have a problem and she's like, here's the sitch. And she's she is a um, therapist, and she does, like, family counseling and all of this. And so I was, like, waiting for some beautiful word of wisdom to yeah, come I need, from her. Yeah, I need her number later. <laughs> and she said, here's what I have to promise you. I guarantee you are going to screw up your kids somehow. I promise. And she said, you know, you're going to come at it with all the things that, you know, did or didn't happen to you in your childhood and you're going to say I'm not going to do this or that to my kid because it happened to me which is exactly what our parents did mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. in, in, in essence or these are the things my parents did so that's why I'm going to do it too right so we all have this legacy parenting and we all get screwed up somehow anyway so it'll be the thing you didn't think of right and so her that was such good advice with parenting of just try to stay authentic try to stay real it's still a tiny human like they're still an individual just remember that you're in that relationship with that person yeah you know so that's what I've tried to do I also realized that I don't think you really start parenting until they're like seven like before that you're just keeping them alive right like yeah. and trying not to kill them and trying not to kill yourself and all of these things right like I think that um, you're just keeping them alive for so mm -hmm. long and then they turn seven and you're having conversations like real conversations about how you treat other people or how other tr people treat you or you know what a bully is or what or they're really not or all of these things you know and that was where I really felt like oh man this is like the meat of it this is these are conversations that are going to shape my child as yeah. an adult and, um, you know, now my son is nine, and I feel like I'm having more and more of those conversations every day with him where I'm like, oh, snap, I'm really parenting now. Yeah. That was all, like, 
you know, the pregame. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think that I read somewhere that kids, their personalities are already set by age five. Oh, I believe that. But I think that the moral, com- their moral compasses start at five yeah. or seven. Yeah. Like, I think that's when you start shaping them, you know, to be good citizens, yeah. to be compassionate mm-hmm. to how to love each other and how to you know not kill their sibling and right those things like that and how to be respectful and um, of course I think you have to revisit all of that in the middle school years <laughs> <laughs> and then in the uh, high school years for sure you're just praying or just right. get them through yeah oh, golly don't tell me that <laughs> <laughs> but um, I also wanted to talk about like I, I love planning and so like my big tip to moms is like making sure that you know what's coming around the bend before yes. things happen so on Sunday nights I always like do my menu planning and um, you know what I need to get at the grocery store that week because I may or may not go that Monday or I might go um, right. sometime that week but Knowing like what's around the bin and planning out meals and just planning out like what's happening this next week yeah. is really helpful. Do you do that? Oh yeah, we have a huge uh, like wall calendar and like the one you can write on. And I will put three months in advance actually. I'll put like the whole three months all together and I'll have like all of the bills are on there when everything's due. All of the school things are all on there. What I have going on for work, what my husband has going on for work, and it's literally just like this big visual on the wall to be able to see stuff out in a whole corner. And that is so helpful because I found what was happening with me was most of my chaos was happening at the beginning of the next month because I couldn't see it. And so, so do you tear one off and then put the next month on? Yep. Okay. And so, what was happening was I was like majorly stressed at the beginning of every month, and I'm like, "This is so dumb. Why do I like unnecessary? I just need to be able to see that it's coming." And so that I just started putting things out in a quarter, and it just helped me to be able to see, "Oh, we've got this event that's coming up in two weeks." So we know we're going to be out this night, this night, this night. I'm not going to need to make dinner these nights. We're going to need to eat leftovers. We're going to have to, and just like really kind of mapping those things out of knowing what it really was going to look like, how it was going to affect the budget. And so that's just how we've done that's things awesome. from this that. big giant calendar. I love, I love a calendar. that it's three months because yeah. it's doable and then you don't feel overwhelmed, but then you can see that next month well we can plan up. too we were like oh look we've got this trip to little rock coming up and we could see it getting closer and closer and and things like that too like we work to not eat out a whole bunch mm-hmm. and sometimes you're just like darn it i just want to eat out and so a little bit of seeing oh but i'm about to have an entire weekend of eating out so i can wait Good idea. and yeah. so that kind of Good helped planning. a little bit with just my own mm-hmm needing to satisfy, you know, wanting to go out to eat, right? And yeah. so seeing that it was coming up and that I was going to be able to do a ton of that yeah. kind of made me say, I can skip Chinese tonight, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So what are you loving these days? Oh, um, like so much. I, well, I love podcasts. I've talked about that. I love audiobooks. I, I do hope a Rising lot of Story is your favorite. Rising Stories <laughs> is so up there. Um, it, it, it truly is. I, I, I love hearing the stories of other women that are on here, so it's definitely on, on the top of my list. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Being Boss is another one that I really oh, yeah. love. I love That's those good. girls. They're freaking mm-hmm. hilarious. Um, and The Lady Gang, if I need something really funny. The Lady Gang is the so lady, funny. I don't know about that okay, one. Okay, they maybe the swear gang. a little bit, but I think it's okay. And Danielle Laporte is another one. She's like my girl. Um, but I, I love a podcast. I, I love audiobooks. Um, there's a book called Fierce Conversations that is by Susan Scott. Yeah. And it's so good. It's so good. If, if you ever have to talk to another human, like... You need to read this book, essentially, like, I'm because have to get that one. it will just really help you handle conflict and be authentic and get past it. I feel like 
you know, every workplace has drama, every family has drama, every everything has drama somewhere. And the drama can be such a distraction from just getting work done. So it's like if we can just have this real conversation, get to the meat of it, get past it and get working, mm-hmm. it's just going to be, it's going to save so much time. Like we're going to be able to get further. We're going to be able to get traction, all that stuff. So love that book. Um, part of my mama routine it's definitely dry shampoo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta have that. Dry shampoo for sure. Which kind do you use? Um, I use Davines. Oh. They are a brand out of Italy, and they're a family-owned company, and I love them. Um, they have a lot of really good, like, ethical standards, but they have a dry shampoo that's a spray, and then they have another one that's, like, a brush. It's a powder brush called a volume creator. I probably Ooh. use that one more because I'm totally someone who will wash my hair at night and let it air dry. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, your hair's flat because you didn't blow dry it. And so this, I use this little brush, and it, like, makes my hair look like I had blow dried it. Wow. It's amazing. Where do you get it? It's just, like, at Amazon or Yeah, something? you can get it on Amazon for okay. sure. Yeah, there are a lot of salons in Nashville as well that you can buy it if you want to shop local and whatnot. But they yeah. have it on Amazon as well through Davines. Cool. Um, and, oh, uh, other just go-to is Def Paula's Choice. Have you used any of her skincare before? No. She has a gel, like a BHA gel and an AHA gel, and, like, I'll use the two, two of those, and they're just the best for an exfoliator. They're so good. Where do you get that? You can get that on Amazon, on too. On Amazon, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, good, mm-hmm. good. I'll have to check those out. I'm always looking for some... Good skincare, and then I have just recently discovered, you can't tell today, but I don't have it in, but I just recently discovered dry shampoo. I think it's fabulous. Because I can't wash my hair all the time because it does dry it out. Yeah, or sometimes I just don't feel like it. Right? Yeah. I just need to get through the day. I know. I, we we so, have better things poo. to do than yes. to wash our hair. Yes. Yes. It's not the washing. It's the drying. It's everything else that comes it's with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what's in store for Mother's Day for you? What do y'all do? Well, I'm spoiled rotten. My husband's a chef. Oh. Um, get out. So nice. I'm pretty much probably going to hang out and do some gardening, hang out with my kids, hang out with my dog, and let my husband feed me. Nice. I have no idea what he's going to make, but it's always amazing. What's your favorite thing that he makes? Oh, that's so hard. So, or the last favorite thing he made? My last favorite thing that he made was um, honestly just kind of random stuff that we had in the house, but it was like a poached egg, Mm -hmm. and he like just makes them perfectly like there's some kind of a magic behind a perfect poached egg but it was it was poached egg and like really yummy fresh tomatoes that we had gotten from a farmer's market and just like this perfect slice of bread and some avocado and it was just like this magical thing but all of the flavors were so bright and fresh Mm. and it was so good that sounds good what's your favorite restaurant here in town oh that's hard too i love fifth and taylor yeah. They're one of my favorites. I one love their favorites. patio. Mm-hmm. Their food is amazing. Their desserts are always perfect. I have a thing with desserts. A lot of times they taste like fridge. Have you noticed that? Like, like the refrigerator? Like they've been in the refrigerator with yes. other uh, well, food, because like onions they or something. Have, yeah. And I will always taste it. And, and it's so gross. Like it just ruins a good yeah. dessert. It so you'd like rather fridge. have something that just maybe does just it. Like just and... give me something. Well, they have the macaroons that are amazing at Fifth and Taylor. Um, we also love City House. Now, I've not been there. It's <sighs> on the top of my list. It is so good. Maybe I wait to go there this Belly week. Belly Pizza at City House is where it's at. Belly Pizza. With an egg. Oh, you have to ask for a big egg. Delicious. Don't sounding. put it in the middle and then dip your crust in it. It's so good. I love a good fried egg. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks so much. This Thank you. Fun. Happy yeah. Mother's Day. Thank you. You too. And uh, I will... Uh, See you around. Absolutely. Thanks.